Hi, I'm Melvin Way, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my channel and put this video on a playlist. If not, uh, check out my playlist that has all of the episodes that will go into this in the future, as well as all the playlists from my other plant growing series. This was a user request uh, that I do a growing series on avocado. This is a Mexican avocado. I washed it first and then I peeled off the sticker, cut into it with a metal knife that's pretty sharp. It's a steak knife and it has those uh, succulent, you know, fatty slices of fruit flesh inside and they're just yellow and green. It tasted really good. I fried all the slices with an egg. This is not something I eat uh, very often. If I eat Mexican food outside, for example, um, you know, I might get a slice of avocado in some of my things. But other than that, it's more of a condiment for chips or something. So you can see the seed up close. It already has cracks in it. I've damaged it, you know, when I was doing the slicing. And if you look here, the insides that are still attached to the fruit flesh are a very dark red which is different than the appearance of what I just washed. I'm going to put it in a glass of distilled water and add some hydrogen peroxide. I love adding hydrogen peroxide to everything because it it's interesting to look at. It fizzes. It's harmless. It generates uh, water and molecular oxygen which is often good for a developing seed because you know at that point they don't use any carbon dioxide they're not photosynthesizing so they only need oxygen to breathe the roots for now I'm just doing this to sterilize the seed and bear in mind that I've already washed it beforehand with a soapy sponge to get off all the fat since it's covered by fat I'm pouring out most of this hydrogen peroxide you don't have to be too precise about your measurements you know there are no hard and fast rules. You don't have to do like a 1% or a 3% or whatever. You know, something around a 1% solution would be fine. You don't want to waste um, too much hydrogen peroxide either. And then I would pour that out into a bunch of paper towels. In this case, paper towels were still dry in some parts, which means I didn't leave enough in. I should have just poured the whole cup under the paper towels. And the purpose of soaking the paper towels in hydrogen peroxide is to prevent rot otherwise I don't know if you have experience but basically everything will just mold over if you don't do this I think that's a common pitfall people have with this so-called um, wet paper bag well not wet, wet paper towel is more like it you know they'll put it in a plastic bag seal it up and then everything just rots away and dies so it's day 11 and I'm gonna open this up have a look while oh, there's still some sun out it's after work so nothing is moldy that's very good news the appearance pretty much looks the same it does look like there's a crack on the other side although I'm not sure if that was there beforehand and we'll just do some watering with a squirt bottle I have full of 0.5 percent hydrogen peroxide since it's not wet enough in there it's day 14 I'm still looking at that crack it's getting bigger you know, I think we're going places. Um, hopefully I have the polarity right. So I have the pole that was meant to be the top, you know, facing uh, up. And a root will come out of this crack at the bottom. I think that's right because usually in all these plant germination series, uh, a root system comes out first. And due to gravitropism, it goes downwards. So it's if it's cracking on the bottom half, then I think I'm off to a good start. So it's finally day 21. It's been three weeks. I'm really impatient to see what's going on inside. You know, these paper towels look surprisingly clean for something that's been sitting on a TV set-top box, which is uh, roughly 30 to 36 Celsius, depending on the weather. And it's been really hot. You know, it's... 100% humidity in there, but we do have a root. And let's get a closer look. So that looks really fresh for something that's been sitting in a hot 100% container pressing against wet paper towels for three weeks. So you do have two spots, blotches that kind of look like blood, but 
I'm sure that's just a discoloration um, due to some of that uh, seed coat on the outside, if you can call it that. It sort of looks like a upside down candlestick at this point of some kind. You know, and there's this huge crack that began at the bottom and it's gone all the way to the North Pole or the top pole if you want to call it that. The root itself looks healthy enough. It does have some brown spots. I'm not sure if that's mold or whatnot, but I don't see any fruiting bodies. So all that hydrogen peroxide squirting in incubation pretty much did the trick. This is a very interesting seed germination compared to everything I've seen before. It's just you have this huge woody globe that just cracks. But it's not hard like wood. It's very prone to damage as the knife cut showed in the very beginning. And the textures are very interesting to look at in full sun. So with that said, I have this pot of dirt that's been sitting here. It's a bottom watering pot that kind of flares out from the top, Misco brand. I'm going to plant my avocado seed in there. Avocado seed belongs to a fruit that's a fleshy fruit, the fattiest fruit in the world, I think. And this is just potting mix that's been sterilized before by baking in the oven at, say, 350 or 400 Fahrenheit. Um, definitely well over 100 Celsius. I think that's like 170 something Celsius. But anyway, there's a little bit of diatomaceous earth and sand in there, which I used to defeat fungus gnats. I'm going to move this seed up a little bit because it's too deep now. I want to be able to see a faster sprouting event so I'm gonna put it right in the middle it's gonna have this whole pot to itself I just had this intuition that an avocado seed would be very easy to grow once germinated and that the germination itself wouldn't actually be too difficult I had no idea it would take so long but you know here we are it's been 20 something days and you know when you water soil that's really dry it just starts shifting around like a bunch of chocolate cocoa powder or something like that. You know, when you have these milk powders, chocolate powders, uh, everything just shifts around and acts really, really hydrophobic. Granted, I'm comparing protein to dirt and wood chips, but it takes a few hours for this really dry potting mix to start to absorb water, especially all the wood chips in there. But once they do, it's really, really hygroscopic you know, holds on to water really well while providing aeration. So there's air space in there, which is important, but you don't want things to be too spacey or have wood chunks too big, so I throw those out. So that's my watering can. Fits slightly under a liter, maybe 900 mLs if full. And I'm doing another pail, so that's about 1.8 liters going in there for a pot that probably has a diameter of Let's see, uh, I think it's 35 centimeters, 13.7 inches. So anyway, it's a decent sized pot. It's not huge, but it's not so small that my plants will have this problem like they did last year with the Loquat series where everything just, you know, clogs up all the soil mass immediately and then has no room to grow. So the water is dripping through. It's a bottom watering pot. This water will get absorbed back into the potting mix when it becomes more receptive. All the surfaces to the particles have been wetted. And then I'll add more water as time goes on. So before we skip to the next few days, let's just take a look at this paper towel mass inside. Some of that stuff is just discoloration, you know, rub off from the seed coat. I don't really see any evidence of mold or at least evidence of mold that's doing well. So it's day 23, two days later, fast forwarding. It's just a lot of watering with a squirt bottle that contains 0.5% hydrogen peroxide. We're in the May gray phase in coastal Southern California where it's just cloudy all the time. Day 27, finally I got some sun, you know, more watering. And day 43, check out my new setup. I got this unfinished um, wood console table or um, it's just sort of a long table that's thin very nice uh, getting it unfinished was cheaper it was like $85 off Amazon but 
to get to the point there's a uh, finally a sprout there and you can kind of see like it's coming out of split earth but that's actually the flesh of the avocado seed all the reserves and you can see a white fuzziness at the tip I'm just gonna go ahead and bet that those are you know a waxy hairs provided by the plant itself to avoid damage to the shoot apical meristem when this red tusk is bursting out of the soil because it's thick it's got a lot of mass and it's coming out pretty quickly uh, in nature probably against rocks and stuff or coarse particles like here so I'm just gonna squirt on some hydrogen peroxide on the off chance that it is mold instead of hairs that are to protect it and as you can see relative to the particles like that little chunk of a branch in the upper left you know this thing is tiny at this stage so that's basically it um, avocado was quite easy to germinate I'm shocked that it took 45 days to get to this point it looks beautiful it looks like a red furry tusk I'm convinced that that's not mold and it looks like there's a earthquake fault in there so I don't think that storage of uh, nutrients is going to go away anytime soon. It probably won't rot either, based on what I saw in my low quad series. I'm squirting hydrogen peroxide directly into the crack so it can just trickle down and feed the tap root. I expect this to grow very fast based on the side of the seed and the huge amount of nutrient reserves in the seed flesh. So stay tuned to my channel and wait for episode 2. If you're watching this late, it'll already be out on a playlist. Thanks for watching.